Now, as we begin to wind down on this video, I want to stress one last time that the critical issue here is external validity. Remember, that is not the same as internal validity. Sometimes, depending on your interest, your research problem, and so forth, you may be far more interested in making sure the internal validity of your research is sound and rigorous, and you may be less concerned about being able to generalize your results to larger groups of people. And if that's the case, then you may be willing to live with non-random sa uh, sampling techniques or bias samples, and you'll make no claim to be able to generalize to larger populations. But in other cases, with other problems, other issues, uh, external validity may become a central issue. Just to give a single example, say you're trying to, I don't know, predict the outcome of a presidential election. You go out and you do surveying, you're, who's going to go out and try and figure out who's going to vote, who they're going to vote for, and so forth. And ultimately, you're going to make all sorts of forecasts or predictions about election outcomes based on your sampling design. In that particular case, obviously, external validity becomes a critical issue. And things like sampling error and especially sampling bias become a huge problem. At the end of the day, if you have serious sampling bias, you're going to get a lot of egg in your face, or at least you run the risk of making predictions that are wildly inaccurate given what's really going on out in the real world. But you'll fall into the trap of thinking you're doing random sampling, perhaps, but ultimately you're going to fool yourself and you may fool other people. Ultimately, your ability to generalize, extrapolate results, make forecasts of presidential elections, all of those things are only as good as your sampling design. Now, that concludes our discussion of basic issues in methodology, but we have one more video to go uh, in our methodology series where we're going to talk about some of the uh, strengths and weaknesses of different research methods, comparing, well, things like experiments, observational research, and surveys in terms of their external validity, in terms of their internal validity, and one other criteria. So next time around, we're going to do a little more discussion of different research methods, doing a very quick and fast comparison of the strengths and weaknesses, advantages and disadvantages of these different approaches. We'll see you next time. Thank you very much.